large cities have a great movie theater, but few of them have this many great movie theaters. Every time I walk into these theaters, I'm absolutely just blown away. It's a completely different effect than watching it on a VCR. Yes, movies do matter. They're not just something that's on the screen and then gone. Couldn't possibly imagine a world without the movie palaces. Every single night, you always get something. This is Last Remaining Seat. Hey, Ben Mankiewicz here with uh, Christina Rice at the Million Dollar Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, So-called because it cost... A million dollars. ...to buy and build. Supposedly. Legend it, has it. It would be dozens of dollars more today, I suspect. Christina, what is Last Remaining Seats? It is an annual film series where we show classic movies in the classic downtown movie palaces. The crowds just get so into it, and, and it's not, you know, people don't talk on their cell phone, people don't talk to their friends, people, you know, aren't as disrespectful as they tend to be going to contemporary movies. So to be in a theater like this, where there's almost 2,000 people, you know, just laughing and cheering when Joan Crawford slaps Anne Blythe and Mildred Pierce, I mean, it's just an amazing experience. So perhaps it's natural. Maybe that's why Father... <gasps> Anne Blythe's daughter was here with her grandkids, and I, you know, spoke to Anne Blythe's daughter. She said, oh, yeah, you know, my kids have never seen their grandma on screen. <laughs> to see, you know, people, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> people just getting so excited when their grandma gets slapped by Joan Crawford. I don't know <laughs> if that was traumatic for them or not. I love historic theaters. I've been going to historic theaters since I was a child, back when they really weren't as historic. It's a great way to understand about the development of a city and how people came together. You can do that in churches, you can do that in, in you know, concert halls, you can do that in sporting arenas, but most people really you know, come together at the movies. You don't get these theaters everywhere. They really are special to Los Angeles. Nobody knows they're here, and then our job is to show these palaces and get people involved with their preservation. Welcome. My name is Steve Needleman, the owner of the Orpheum Theater. It was somewhat run down like a lot of others here on Broadway. Uh, this afforded me that once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to work on something like this and uh, brought it back to life in 2001. But I think bringing this back was trying to replicate as much that was here uh, and trying to do what you could with a venue that was 80-plus years old at the time. You see people walk into these theaters and they've never come in before and their mouths just drop open. And they turn to their friend and say, did you know it was going to be this way? They thank me for taking their ticket. They thank me for giving them that program. They're just so excited to be here. They're just enthralled and they'll say, can we walk down front and look? <laughs> I mean, they're eager to come look because it is so interesting and different for them. It's not a movieplex. It's not a 48plex somewhere. And one of my favorite things to do is to, because I'm backstage a lot, is to go behind the screen, watch the film in reverse, and watch the audience. What do you, you see the laughter or the frowns or the crying or whatever? You see the audience reacting to a movie. I like to walk around the theater while the film is on the screen, and um, if you go up near the front of the screen and look back, they're just all there in you know, rapt attention. I do enjoy getting that feeling of feedback from the audience, especially at the Los Angeles Theater where a lot of them come up to the projection booth before and after the show. And a lot of them have never seen projection equipment, have no idea what it's like, and they're amazed just to see the basic projectors there. People who put on last remaining seats, they're volunteering uh, their time. This is Hollywood, everyone wants to make a buck, get ahead. How do you get them to give up all this time? In the offices, we have a, a vault with a large collection of negatives that we keep on people. So it's blackmail? It is blackmail. I'm suspecting the actual answer is... Passion, the love for providing entertainment in an historic setting. Seats in the balcony only, stairway to the right, please. I do not get paid for doing last remaining seats. I do it because I believe in what the Conservancy is trying to do through their series. There's so many times when I said, oh, I wish I had been alive back then to be a part of that. And it was bigger than life and more exciting. We've been looking forward to this for months. I got addicted to old movies when I was a little kid, and then it kind of stuck, and now I'm an old kid. I felt, man, if I'd seen this for the first time on a television, all this would have been lost. 